So whatever your specific person's doing, you've got to think, well, why am I having this story right now? Why am I reacting this way? Why am I assuming they meant this and this? Why am I wanting to fix this? Why am I wanting to say this? Why am I wanting to tell them off? Why am I wanting to leave? Why am I wanting to push them away? Why? Oh, I'm making a whole story here about what's going on, about what they're doing, about what they mean, about how they feel about me. And you've got to understand in any moment in time, guys, it is your sole choice what story you sticky note, whatever's happening with. So we've had a vote and the votes are in, but we've had like a unanimous tie between how to get rid of the old story when it's so dominant and then you get triggered by the 3D and go backwards. What do we do with the old story thoughts and our triggers when we're manifesting either a specific person or anything else in this Loz lesson? I'll teach you what not to do and what to do. So guys, the old story is only made up by you. No one else is putting those thoughts in your brain. Now, you've got to understand that even when someone's said something to you about someone, when you've heard something about someone, when you've been triggered by something in the 3D that the person did, you're the only person making up stories about whether that's true or not true. You're the only person in control of your opinion of what you heard, saw, and experienced. Whether they did it, your friend did it, you heard something, you experienced something. Two people could experience the same thing and have completely different stories about those things. You will have your own story and that story is obviously going to be based on the you you think you are. And if you think you are a person who, say, doesn't get prioritised or doesn't feel good enough or feels like they won't be chosen, then you're going to read into whatever's happening, what you're experiencing, what you've heard, what they've done with the story you already hold about you. So the aim here is to uncover what the old stories are we already hold about ourselves so we can identify when we're painting a person, covering them with, sticky noting them with all the stories that we've made up because they're not actually true about them. And people could come in and tell you something about that person, but it's whether you choose to believe it or not. You could see something that person did, hear something that person said, experience something with that person, like your specific person, and assume it means something. Somebody else could experience that same thing and assume it means nothing. So, for example, you could meet someone who has been married before. And if you have a story that you won't be chosen, you will naturally assume this person doesn't want to commit, doesn't want to choose you, is over marriage and children and having that kind of life and doesn't want that kind of commitment. Another person who has a much better self-concept, much better opinion of the fact that they're going to be chosen by whomever, whenever, and however, whatever circumstance, wouldn't even dream of having that story that the person wouldn't choose them. It doesn't matter that they've been married before. It doesn't matter they've already had children. It doesn't matter even if they said, I never want to be married again. That person's going to think, well, you're going to be marrying me. Two different people, same circumstance. And you guys think the story you're holding is true when actually all you did was you painted a story over a person based on what you think about you and what you assume that situation means for you. Another person doesn't feel that way, think that way, experience life that way, and won't think that way about that person or have that kind of story about them. And they'll have a completely different outcome than you would. So when you realize that, you've got to realize you're the only person in possession of the story because you're the one writing it. I'll say that again. You're the only one writing the story you hold about that person and it doesn't matter what you heard, experienced or saw, you're still the one writing it. You're still the one thinking it. You're still the one imagining it to be true. You can decide in an instant that that's actually not true. That of course they want to commit to you. Of course they want to be married to you. Of course they're choosing you. You can just decide. You can just change that story in an instant right? Like a choose your own adventure at the end of one of those choose your own adventure books when you're a kid, you got to the end of the story and there were different ways the story could go and you can choose your own ending. A lot of you are just going down the natural path you always went down, having the same ending you always were going to have and you chose the wrong adventure. There's a million different adventures you could choose, guys, and you think you aren't the chooser of the end of the story, of the fairy tale ending, and you're the one fucking it up. You got to the end of the Choose Your Own Adventure book. You know those books I'm talking about? I don't know. You're probably not old, as old as me to have had those books. But when you were young, 
you get to the end of a certain chapter and you could choose where it went. And there were like five different choices. And when you chose that part of the story, that, that next adventure like pathway, it took you on a different part of the story. And it would say, go to page, da, da, da. And you just read the story you wanted to read. You've got to do a choose your own adventure with your specific person. Choose your own adventure in your own life. Because a lot of you aren't understanding that the only thing generating the story you hold is you. And anyone else in that same situation could have a completely, utterly and totally opposite story based on their childhood, their beliefs and their self-concept. And you all think, oh, this person's like this, but I saw this, but I heard this, but these people are like X, Y, Z. No, they're not. That's just your assumption. And this is the law of assumption. So now we know that and we know that we create our own stories. You're not going to tell me about old stories because you realize you created them. So don't come telling me about your old story, about your specific person or what they're like or what they did or what they said because you just heard what I said and you should know now that you're the one creating that and the only person who can change it is you. Now, the second part of this laws lesson, the second question I had is, okay, so you've changed the story, but then something happens and you go backwards. You get triggered by something. Now what? Again, same thing. You're the only person choosing to be triggered. No one's holding a G-U-N to your head, making you be triggered by something. I'll say that again. No one is forcing you to be triggered by something. You're the person creating the story about the thing you experienced that triggers you. Oh, no, but I just get triggered, do you? Or do you read something a certain way and you react in a certain way based on what you believe to be true about that situation and you trigger your damn fucking self? You're always triggering yourself, guys. And a lot of people love to blame it on the other person and say, oh, they triggered me, they do this to me, they're like this with me. No, they're fucking not. I'll say it again. Someone could be in the same situation as you and not get triggered in the same way or not get triggered at all because they're not you and they don't hold the stories you hold about yourself. So not only does your old story get generated by you that you hold about people and any story you create about them, but any trigger you get triggered by is also generated by you. So who's the common denominator here in all the situations where someone triggers you or someone's like this? You. Like, guys, if you can understand this about life, you can understand that even when someone's pissing you off in the 3D, you have to sit there and realise that you're putting those words in their mouth. Someone did that to me the other day. was saying stuff that I totally disagreed with. Oh, sorry, my coffee machine's going off. And I thought, why is this person saying all this stuff? And then I thought, I must think this subconsciously. And so my fears are coming out of this person's mouth. So I couldn't get annoyed at them. I couldn't get, get triggered by them. I could have gotten an argument, told them they were wrong, tried to correct them, said none of your business, but I realised they're just reflecting my fears in this conversation. So I chose in that moment not to be triggered by what they were saying because I had to identify the fact that they are simply my reflection and they were reflecting my subconscious fears. A lot of you have zero self-control, zero fucking zero, like goddamn toddlers chucking a tantrum. And it's astounding to me how many of you still watch me and then say, I did this. I said this. Oh, I fucked it up. Guys, because you don't have any self-control, like literally none. You get so triggered by shit, you react. The whole key to life is non-reaction. Like, have you not got that yet? Because when you react, you lose. Have you ever heard that expression, the person who cares less always wins? Why does the person who cares less always win? Because the person who cares gets emotional. The person who cares gets triggered. The person who cares reveals too much of their emotional life to the other person. The person who cares has stakes involved. And the person who cares shows their ass. Now, I'm not saying don't care about your specific person or don't love someone or don't have emotions about something, but the more you can just stand back and be neutral and not react, the more you are in the power position in all aspects of life. And a lot of you can't observe yourself when you're getting yourself riled up, getting yourself triggered, 
and you can't stand outside yourself and stop yourself from reacting like a fucking toddler. And I just, maybe it's because I looked after a lot of children in my life. I find a lot of adults chuck tantrums and they don't even realise they are tantrum chuckers. And I watch them chucking tantrums and I do the exact same thing I used to do to children, which is just be quiet, be silent while they do whatever they're doing. And I don't try and reason with them. I just go, okay, just like I would have with a kid chucking a tantrum. I used to have this one kid who chucked a tantrum all the time and I used to just walk over this child, like step over them, not step on them, and just read a magazine until they stopped. And that's sometimes how your specific person is acting, like I do, when you chuck a mental or physical outward 3D tantrum. Like react, like yell, like cry, like get emotional, like accuse them. They just think, Jesus. And that's what I think about a lot of you in here sometimes. And I don't mean to pass judgment, but some of you act like five-year-olds with your specific person. And you come into my free subconscious laws Facebook group or the squad and you tell us what you did and some of what you are doing in the 3D shows me that you have a real lack of control of your emotional life if that were the corporate world and you were in a work environment would you yell and scream or cry or whatever at work a lot of you would never dream of acting at work like you do in life with in your relationship. I know a girl who acted like that in life with her partner all the time and would chuck tantrums and cry at work. You know, that girl was one of the top lawyers I've ever met and never made partner and they told her because you're too emotional. <laughs> the girl never made partner, still hasn't. Because she emotionally couldn't cope with life. Doesn't matter how smart she was. So you've really got to assess, guys, when you're getting triggered. Am I acting like a five-year-old here? Am I not able to stand outside myself, see myself about to react and stop myself? Don't I realise the thing I'm reacting to is thing, a thing I have a story about and I'm the only person holding that story and all I have to do right now is have a different story and then I won't feel reactionary and I won't feel the need to react and I can just do nothing? Oh. Now, a lot of people will probably watch this and say, but Loz, you yell all the time. Yeah, Okay. But that's my shtick. People like me yelling. A lot of the time I'm just being passionate, guys, or I'm just frustrated. But I don't go around yelling in life like that. Like, <laughs> you ask the people in my life, I don't yell and scream like I do on videos here. I might get really passionate and intense about stuff. You ask my stuff. But unless it's like some major fucking crisis in my life, I don't act like that. I can observe myself right? I can get upset though about things and I have to stand back afterwards and go, well, you got upset then. You got triggered by something, right? I still do. Of course I still do. But what I'm saying is, guys, the key here is to observe it when you've done that and not do it again, right? So that makes sense? Hang on, where are we? Oh, hello, Cash. Love your yelling. Oh, thank you. Well, guys, look, a lot of you ask me to yell. And I, I think a lot of people who watch me, it's really interesting their reactions to me because it tells me about them. And a lot of people who don't like my yelling and get triggered by me are people who've suffered from abuse or had a traumatic childhood where someone actually yelled or abused them. So they can't handle me. Or they take, they're very oversensitive and take it the wrong way. So just observe, when you react to me even, why are you reacting the way you are? Like, why? Because that's about you. So whatever your specific person's doing, you've got to think, well, why am I having this story right now? Why am I reacting this way? Why am I assuming they meant this and this? Why am I wanting to fix this? Why am I wanting to say this? Why am I wanting to tell them off? Why am I wanting to leave? Why am I wanting to push them away? Why? Oh, I'm making a whole story here about what's going on, about what they're doing, about what they mean, about how they feel about me. 
And you've got to understand in any moment in time, guys, it is your sole choice what story you sticky note, whatever's happening with. Don't you guys realize that? Don't you guys realize you're choosing the wrong adventure? You're at the end of the book and instead of reading it and choosing the adventure you want, you're just going down the old pathway you used to and not realizing there were 10 other adventures you could have chosen. And then you're pissed off. Well, you chose the same path you always do, which is getting annoyed, pushing them away, giving them an ultimatum, yelling, crying, getting emotional, leaving them, writing nasty texts, reacting, driving past the house. Did you do all that last time or the 10 other relationships before? Do you think that's wise? Oh, yeah, I always do that. Well, stop. Observe yourself. Have some ability, guys, to stand outside yourself and observe yourself before you react. Before you go down a rabbit hole of a certain story that's not going to help you. Whenever you're thinking things, guys, about another person, think, is this thought helping me? If I go down the rabbit hole of this particular thought about this person, is this going to be a hurtful thought I'm dwelling on? This rabbit hole I'm going down, is this going to lead to me getting upset? Is this going to lead to me thinking X, Y, Z bad about them? Yeah, it is. So why am I thinking it? Like as soon as you start thinking anything bad about someone, guys, just go, oh, no, that's not. That's not true. Anything bad about a situation? Oh, no, that's not true. Because you can. You can go down that rabbit hole and start getting fearful. And you've got to understand when that happens, it's just because you're fearful. What's my fear right now? Oh, my fear is they don't want me. Oh, my fear is I'm not going to get that thing. Oh, my fear is it's not going to work out. Oh, my fear is I'm going to get hurt. Oh, fuck. Is that all this is? This is why I'm making this story up. This is why I want to react. This is why I'm getting triggered because I have a fear X, Y, Z is about to happen. Understand? So a lot of you have to stop before you open your fat mouth, before you say anything and before you do anything in the 3D, but not only in the 3D, but in your mind. You also need to stop yourself from going down a rabbit hole of unfavorable stories. Okay, I hope that helped. All right, guys, I'm just going to go to a few questions and then you guys can watch this back on YouTube as well. Now I have one in my office, she's ridiculous. What are you talking about? I used to be that girl, oh, and now you've got one in your office, yep. Yeah, yeah, finally have Instagram to follow you. Oh, wonderful, guys. So follow me on here, guys, because we're going to have a lot more stories soon, a lot more personable stuff with me, stuff with my new staff and my office and things. So make sure you follow me on Instagram, won't you? Lois, I've lied to SP about something. What should I do? How to manifest marriage? Well, decide that it doesn't matter that you lied. Decide they don't care. Decide they understand. You're the only person holding the story that that's going to matter and it's going to stop you getting married. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually just affirming for self-concept and opened my Instagram and you were live and this is my first time catching you live. Let's go. Oh, wonderful darling. Can someone reach out to me even if we've not been in touch for two years? Yes, guys, it doesn't matter. The circumstances don't matter. They're just circumstances. What about sensitive people? Well, a lot of overly sensitive people can't handle me, so they don't watch me. Or they write nasty comments or tell me off or tell me to change or tell me to talk slower or not yell. I'm like, what am I going to do? Change for your sensitivities? Fuck off. Watch someone else. Then they'll go watch someone else, not learn, and then finally come back to me when they actually want to learn. So if you're overly sensitive about stuff, you've got to ask yourself, why am I like this? I finally got my bestie to stop throwing tantrums every time her SP did something unfavorable. We'll stop having the story that she does that, darling. Talking about it is also keeping the circumstances in place because you are aware of it. Let the dead bury the dead. That's exactly what let the dead bury the dead means. Exactly, darling. I'm glad you brought that quote up. So, guys, do you understand that? That that old story is dead and buried. It's old. It's laggy. It's, it's, it's like an old newspaper. It's yesterday's news. And you're keeping it alive by talking about it, ruminating about it thinking about it, having discussions about it, asking questions about it. Why are you doing that? I have one in my office. Her traumas are all out. I feel it. Oh, my God, that's terrible. Supervisor. Oh, wonderful. Hang on. Can someone change 3D if I know that company wants to fire me? You're not changing 3D, darling. You're changing you. Your 3D is reflecting you. So you must have a story. They're going to fire you, so they will, because you're not changing your story that you're going to get fired. You're not changing 3D. I know that 3D does not mean nothing, but I have a fear because I'm a single mum and without a job, I don't know how I'll survive. So you'll probably be fired because your fear is so strong that any moment I'll be fired, they, they'll fire you. 
It's not about the job or the people or the job or the boss or the hiring and firing. It's about you have such a strong fear that this will happen, that it will happen because that's your fucking story. Did you listen to anything I just said? If you don't want to be fired, stop having the absolutely ridiculous story that you will be because you're the only person having that story. And secondly, I don't know how I would survive because I'm a single one with a daughter. Well, that's your fucking story. You know the amount of single people I know who are doing amazingly well for themselves, but you've got a story. Singleness means you're all fucked. Being a single mum means you're fucked. That's your story. You know the amount of single mums I know that are millionaires? I guess that won't be you because you think that won't happen for you. Why are you thinking that? Laws, can you please explain to me how to stop the negative thoughts at the back of my head? I'm new here. Guys, listen, you can't stop them sometimes. You've just got to replace them. Okay. So you have so many thoughts a day, like 70,000, and we all have the same amount. You can't stop them from coming. It's like a train schedule that just keeps coming and the trains keep coming. They're going to keep coming whether you like it or not. So the only thing you can do is pick up the train and put a different train on the train track. Just think a different thought. The trains will always come right? You're trying to stop them. What are you going to do? Think nothing. That doesn't work. Replace them. So me believing a guy is shy, therefore he won't open up or pursue. That's actually me feeling not good enough to be chosen fully. Guys, they might be shy. They might be a player. They might be noncommittal. It's all reasons why you won't get what you want, why you won't be chosen. Oh, he's too shy. Oh, he won't approach me. Oh, he won't want to initiate. Oh, la, 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 la. Excuses, excuses, all based on your story about you. Yes. So change that story. Stop saying he's like that. You help me practicing my English. That's good. Oh, good, darling. Only my my only call with Laws. I used to hide my childhood. I can tell. Oh, yeah. When you had your call with me, darling. I asked myself, what would Laws do? Oh, lovely. You remind me of my childhood ballet teacher. I think that's why when you say it, it actually sinks in. Oh, really? <laughs> it's Madeline. Hi, Laws. Oh, hi, darling. You totally triggered me the first time I saw you on TikTok, but it was because I didn't want to be faced with what I need to hear. And look at you now, darling. You're burning down apartment blocks and getting fired. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> now, nah, Bay, you keep yelling. You're the only reason I finally have control of my reality. Oh, good yelling. Hooray. What's this? You, As you mentioned a while back, recently you got triggered by someone and realized it's probably down wrong thought you had that mirrored. So apart from ignoring 3D, what can be done to fix the situation? Yeah, so if I get triggered by someone in my 3D now, I've got to observe I'm the person making up a story that's triggering me. So I don't ignore the 3D, I go, God, I've got a really terrible story about the 3D. I don't ignore 3D, guys. A lot of you are trying to ignore shit. Who's telling you to ignore shit? Some of you can't ignore shit. Some of you are so goddamn triggered by shit. How are you going to ignore it when you bitches are so like, ah, like this with the 3D? You're going to ignore it, are you? No, you're not. So have a different story about it. I'm like this. Why am I like this? Oh, yeah, because I'm really fearful that he's going to leave me and that means he doesn't want me and I'm going to be alone. Well, maybe I've just got to change that story. Oh. Oh, yeah, he's here acting like this, but I'm the only person making him act like this. I'm just going to make him act different with my new thinking about me and him. Think different. Oh, look, he's starting to act different. <laughs> Guys. Loz, you've changed my life. So many coaches before that waste my money. I'm doing fuck the 3D course after kick ass you, and it really helps. Oh, what are doing? Hey. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Loz, how would you go about manifesting your dream home? Imagine what it would look like. Imagine it in every detail. Imagine the rooms. Imagine the outside. Imagine the direction the sun comes in. Imagine your furniture in each of the rooms. Imagine sleeping in the beds. Imagine getting up in the morning. Imagine using the kitchen. If you know what the house looks like, imagine your furniture piece by piece in every room. Even imagine where you put your plants, where you put your clothes, everything. Live there already. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I'm going to go. Um, please do follow me here on Instagram. Follow me over on YouTube as well and subscribe. I will put this over on YouTube and cut it down a little bit so we're not waffling at the start. <laughs> and guys, our new challenge is starting in the squad next week. It's going to be announced tomorrow. A lot of you have had some really great guesses about what the challenge is going to be. Now, challenges are slightly different from courses in our squad, guys. The courses are very, like, strung out, so you only get them on a Monday, whereas challenges is like a post every few days it keeps you really active really accountable really doing stuff okay and it goes for the whole month 
So this challenge is going to keep you accountable and keep your brain active and keep your mind right to get the shit you want for the month of August. And it's going to be the coolest, hottest challenge we've ever done. And a lot of you have guessed it and a lot of you haven't. A lot of you have guessed wrong. I threw a few curveballs in there, but I will be announcing it in the squad tomorrow. The squad is only $50 to join or $35 if you join for the year. And then you'll be there for all our challenges, all our courses, all the help, Mentor Mondays, me going live, me answering your questions, the Q&A, the other squaddies helping you and all the benefits of the squad, like watching my old live coaching sessions, watching all my old lives, all the old Mentor Monday sessions. There are hundreds of videos in there, guys, that you cannot see anywhere else in my subconscious laws squad to so come and join us. It's a really nominal fee for the amount of help and support and accountability you get in there. And you can maintain your manifestation when you stay in there, kind of like a gym membership. All right, guys, so I'll see you soon. I'll see you over on YouTube and in my squad and in my free Facebook group, Subconscious Laws. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.